Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So, today we have got a system from the user skyfit 2 in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending this simulation. And their system is called the Tyre Pustus system, I hope I'm saying that right. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and check out what they have sent us today. So, it should be on the workshop, should have already got it installed, here we go. Okay, let's see what we've got. Right, ooh. Right, a binary star system, 19.1 light years from Earth. So, Tyre Pustus is an orange, a small orange dwarf that um, is just gets out of the red dwarf classification. It is home to a good amount of planets and two with life. Okay, so I'm guessing that's the second star. And the primary star is over there. Okay, wow, that gas giant is close to that star. Okay, so here's the main star itself. So, this is the orange dwarf. All right, cool. Right, so the star itself, stat-wise, obviously small, radius, small, luminosity, nowhere near the sun. So there you can see uh, both of the stars as well. Right, okay, first of the planets, we have Parco here, right. It's a rather large, greenish-blue rocky world. It has no atmosphere because it's been blasted away. Studies show it was a haven for life with spanning oceans once upon a time, of course. Uh, what we'll do is we'll turn off this. We'll go to. We're on, are we on realistic? Uh, let's see. Here. Yeah, we are. Okay. So you've got light from both stars. Okay. Cool. So there's the first of the planets. Right. Next up, we've got. Um, so this one here. Uh, Anatas is the ejected moon of its mother, Ulne. So you can still see it over there, though, the parent planet. So it's not too far away. Um, it's green and grey, it has an orbit mostly the same as One. One is visible every few months reminding the planet of its lost parent. So you can see, there it is, speak the devil, all the way over here. So a very small system, everything's very close together. So if we look here, you can just about see it there as well. So we'll see the planets are fairly nearby, you can see Parco there as well. Okay, nice. But anyways, the planet, the gas giant itself, the lonely gas giant. It once had a moon until it was ejected by a close orbiting planet. The planet sits alone in the scorching heat of its star, so it is actually 155 degrees. Okay. Next up, we've got a spin off grid. Uh, da -da -da -da. So we have um, QP. So over here, so what's going on here? It looks like there's a bit of an interaction going on here. Oh dear, okay. Right. So here is QP. Okay. So, it is a hospitable super-Earth with an advanced civilization called the Kapli. We will not interfere with the epicness of this planet. It has a lot of gigantic islands with deep oceans. It also has two moons. Okay. So, there it is there. Earth-like conditions. 90, but no life likelihood. Probably because it's minus 36. Okay. So, there it is. And then it also has one moon very close to it. Also habitable. So, this is... The ski. So, this is the first moon of Kupi. There's a civilization here close to the um, development stage of our world. We have colonized uh, the ski and we are friends with the natives, the Delio. Apologies if I'm completely butchering the pronunciation. That is a nice looking moon as well. Um, look at this stats here. So, there it is. Okay. 12 degrees on this one. Okay. Nice. And then lastly, we have. Curio, an object in the co-orbital config. It's technically not a moon, but close enough to act like one. A trip to Curio from DSC is only 2.4 Earth days. The Cup E used this moon for mining off-planet launch sites. You can see yeah, it's not too far away, but it has obviously got an interaction with that nearby gas giant and obviously the star itself as well. So next up we've got Ubine. So I wonder if we press play, will it actually tear this rocky planet away? Right, so here it is, gas giant. It has a gas moon as well. It's a gas giant visible from Kupi. It has multiple moons, most of them being small asteroids ripped apart from idle forces. It has giant pillars of magnetic ice floating in the clouds. Some are flat and others have probes landed on them. Oh, wow. Okay. Then on to the moons. So this moon here. Water moon kept heated by tidal forces. There's no life or oxygen life will never develop here. It's kind of similar to Europa in a way, I guess, but slightly more uh, advanced. Okay, and that is the only description we have for all of these moons. So the other moons are as follows here. There you go. Then we also have a gas giant moon as well. Okay, cool. So that's all of the objects around the main star, I think. Yep. Okay. Right, we also have uh, the yeah, second star now. So star two is a hyper small red dwarf. It has two planets. The first planet has amazing views of the first. 
So, uh, up Tentis is a gas giant almost the size of its parent star. It's scorching hot and moonless. The planet's name has been made fun of because it's similar sounding name to male, re <laughs> male reproductive organs. Right. So, yeah, Eupentis. Okay. Uh, next up, we have got uh, Kunvan. It's a hassle rocky planet orbiting Klepso. It has undeveloped lice around around the same stage as prehistoric humans. It has one asteroid moon and amazing views of uh, Apentis. Astronomers thought Kunvan was a moon of Apentis. The natives of the natives of Kunas are confused and scared of us humans. Ooh, right. Okay. That's a cool view as well. Okay. There's one moon there as well. Okay, and that is the only description we have got, but I did see there's another object over here. What is this? Still orbiting the whole binary itself. Okay, here it is. Gas giant has another gas object moon orbiting it as well. They're very close together, actually. Looks like they're on a collision course. Let's press play and see what happens. Let's see. Are they going to interact? Well, that is, is that, that is definitely a moon because it looks... Is it? I don't know, actually. They'd just be passing by. Oh, that is close. That is very close. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a very active system, obviously, because it's a binary. Very close together. So, yeah, it looks like QP did break away from that gas giant then. Okay. Let's have a little... Uh, let's watch this system play out a bit, because I kind of want to see how this advances. Because, obviously, things can change in a system like this very, very easily. Yeah, you can see there. Oh. Oh, it's actually stolen. That gas giant's been stolen by the first star. Oh, that's a disaster. Oh, dear. So we can see it. Eubene, its moons have been just torn apart. The planet's been torn apart. It got stolen by the other red dwarf star. Oh, and that one's smashed into it as well. But it got stolen by the other red dwarf star. And then it got launched around it. And then it ripped everything to shreds. So the binary has been destroyed by the looks of things. With the too many gas giants in orbit. I think the gas giants just ruin it, uh, the orbits in here, because obviously they're too large and too dominant. That causes big trouble. And yeah, that has broken the binary. So let's actually replay that. Let's actually try and see if that happens every time. But you can see, yeah, the large gas giants, they are too much for a little system like this to handle, I'm assuming. Let's look at the mass of these guys. So, so this has 1.88 Jupiters. The star itself is 2.98. So yeah, the, the gas giant has a very big presence in here. This was 1.64 Jupiters. So this gas giant actually has more mass than the, fur, the other star here. So that is a... Yeah, that's, that's going to cause big orbital problems. So let's actually see this play out again from the other star's perspective here. So let's uh, watch as it plays out. Keep an eye on the orbits as well. See that big gas giant there? That is going to cause big trouble. And there's no way this binary will hold with that gas giant there. So you can see, yeah, okay. Oh, so you can see it engulfed one of the smaller objects. One of the small planets was destroyed. So you can see, yeah, that planet where... That last planet we reviewed with life on it has just been completely eaten by that gas giant. Oh dear. But let's see how this plays out again. So we can see Eubene here is approaching the second star again. Let's see if it gets grabbed. Is it going to get grabbed? It has been grabbed. Okay, so this is what caused the uh, issue in the la when we played the system last time. It came in. This other gas giant is obviously already here. And obviously having two gas giants that close in the same area. It's a recipe for disaster. So let's see how this plays out. So we can see the moons. So keep an eye on the moons around here. So we're going to watch it from this one's perspective. So let's uh, turn all this off. Uh, let's get there. Okay. So keep an eye on this. You can see the other gas giant is very nearby now. You can see this gas moon as well. Orbit isn't looking good. But let's see as it slingshots past the star. You can see it's warming up. There is issues. It's getting so close to it. It's going to launch around. The moons have been destroyed. Some of the others have been ejected. It's getting very close to that other gas giant. Is it going to collide? I don't think it is. It's going to just slingshot away. Very, very dangerously close. But it's been grabbed by the other star. And that is getting launched out of the system for good. Okay. Right, let's keep an eye on what's uh, going on here. So let's see. Will the stars hold in place? So you can see other objects have been grabbed from the first star as well. They're being slingshot out of here. Eubene is holding on though. Look, it's coming back for more. That could be a big disaster because it looks like it's on a collision course with the star here. That is oh, going to be big trouble unless the other gas giant can get in the way to do something about it. I don't think it's too late. It's going to go in and it's gone. Big crash there. Okay. So that's obviously going to upset uh, 
probably upset the orbits now it's smashing to the star. A lot of debris flying around here. Okay. Let's keep it rolling though, so let's see how, how our orbit's doing. So we can uh, delete all this, because this is all gone, so let's just get rid of that. Okay. Let's keep it rolling, alright. So you can see, yeah, the, the, those two those two are nicely together, that gas giant and star. They're perfectly happy together. It's just this other star now. Let's see how these guys play out. Because maybe they're in a nice binary now. I think that will probably, hopefully, just sit close together. Oh, that thing's just been slingshot out of here. That's copy. That was a Haspel world. That is gone for good. Ooh. You see, more and more objects are just getting ejected out of here. The binary systems... Oh, they do cause trouble. And yeah, what we're going to do is, speaking of binary systems, I've not forgot, because I did some people were asking the other day, I am going to be doing another Evolving a Solar System from Birth to Death episodes. We're going to do another series, or another system, I should say. We're going to do a binary system with probably two yellow dwarfs, which will probably be absolute carnage. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I'm hoping to start doing that next week. But here we go. So yeah, those two are in a perfectly nice binary now. Look at that. So we can see the remaining planets are obviously the ones closest to the stars. So we've got Parco here, we've got One. So they're the two closest planets to this star. And then obviously around the other star, it's just this one. And then uh, Eupentis here, which are the only objects left. And they're just in a perfect binary now. So after you evolve this system a bit, you can see that only four of the objects are pretty much remaining. So there you go. Well, I should say five objects, actually. <laughs> So, there you go. But anyways, with that all said and done, that does it for this system. So, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, uh, Sky FITU or FITU, for sending this uh, simulation in. Yeah, if you guys liked it, make sure that like button. Also, subscribe for more helps on the journey to 26,000 subscribers. And yeah, guys, really hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, with that all said and done, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.